So here is a problem where we're asked to calculate the weight. And the big thing to know about weight is it is a force. So you can actually use the second law to calculate the weight. And if you remember, the second law says that F equals M times A. So F equals M times A. Except instead of just a regular F, we're going to say the weight force, F sub W. And you might say, okay, so well, what is M, what is A? M is the mass of the object. And every object on Earth, regardless of its mass, is accelerated downward at the same rate by gravity. And that is G, which we have been saying is 10 meters per second squared. I'm technically 9.8, but we usually round it off. So essentially, we can replace our formula and say that the weight force is equal to M times G, where G is taking the place of A. Uh, it all depends on how you want to do that. But that's basically our equation. So if you want to calculate the weight of an object, as in this problem, the weight force equals the mass, 40 kilograms, times g. And again, I'm going to use 10 for Earth, even though that's not technically right. But So that means the weight of a 40 kilogram object is 400 newtons. That is the force that the object is pulled down with. Another way of putting it is also if you had a scale, and you were to put this object onto the scale, whatever it happens to be, it's going to push down on the scale with a 400 newton force. Um, that's the weight. That's another way of thinking about it. So we can do a few problems with this. There's a problem where we know the weight and we want to find the mass. So once again, the weight force equals the mass times g. So in this case, you know the weight. You do not know the mass, but you know gravitational acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. So if you divide each side by 10, you will get the mass is equal to 2 kilograms. And that is the mass. Um, and the big thing about mass is if I go into outer space, the mass of an object never changes. It's always 2 kilograms. The weight, on the other hand, depends on what your g value is. So if I go to a new planet, my weight will change. So this is a problem where I go to Mars. And so if I take a 10 kilogram block to Mars, the weight of it is going to be 10 kilograms times on Mars, G has a value of 3.7 meters per second squared. So on Mars, you would only weigh 37 newtons. Whereas if the same object was on Earth, it would be, as we said, about 100 newtons. That would be the weight on Earth versus on Mars. So, again, weight can change depending on where you are. Mass is not really going to change at all. Um, so here's one more problem. Uh, here's a car on Earth weighs 10,000 newtons. And we want to figure out what it would weigh on Mars. So there, there are some shortcuts to do this problem more quickly, but let's just go through and just use the equation we've been doing. So the weight force is mass times g. So we said it weighs 10,000 newtons on Earth. And we do not know its mass, but we know on Earth it has gravitational pull of 10 meters per second squared. So the mass is 1,000 kilograms. And again, mass is a property that does not change based on where you go. So if we now take this car and bring it to Mars, now the weight, we can calculate the weight on Mars by saying the mass of 1,000 kilograms times Mars's acceleration, which we said was 3.7, the weight on Mars is, end up, is going to be 3,700 um, newtons. So considerably lighter than the 10,000 newtons it weighed on Earth. Again, it's still made up of the same amount of material. It would have the same inertia, because remember, inertia depends on mass, not weight. Um, but it would exert a less of a force. If you had a scale on Mars, it would not uh, register as high as it would on Earth. So um, that's sort of the difference between the two and how we calculate this. So basically, if you remember this equation, remember it's just another version of the second law, you should be able to calculate weight uh, relatively easy as far as this goes. So until next time, I am Derek DeNova. Have a delightful day.